Hi, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. Already came out with the full breakdown and preview of everything you should expect and the things you need to be looking for against the Ravens in this Monday night preseason game, which again, I will be live streaming for. Game starts at 8 p.m. I'm starting the stream at 7.30. We're live streaming all four quarters and everything, so make sure I pull up for that. But on top of all of that, we also have some Washington Commander roster moves that I feel like enough people aren't talking about everywhere that I look. First of all, Joey Sly looks like he won the kicker competition. That's big news. We're going to dive into that, who his competition was, and do should we have confidence in him moving forward? Also, is Fedarian Mathis' injury worse than we thought? Is Jonathan Allen's injury worse than we thought? We got to take a look at a lot of the roster moves that the commanders made today and really dive deep to see what they're trying to tell us, basically. Of course, we'll get a lot more answers once this Ravens preseason game happens Monday night. Um, and of course, Ron Rivera will speak in a press conference afterwards and everything like that. But before then, we're just going to have to go off of what we have. So before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm that subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time and immediately that I release these informative and opinionated videos just like this one, any breaking news like this, training can't break down so even though we're not getting as much information out of the commanders as of august 19th we'll see what happens i'm gonna keep hitting y'all with rico reports now that we're not getting as much training camp information and there's not as much to talk about as far as that goes i'm about to really dive into this ricky film session situation working on ricky stromberg next any breaking news and again i already said it but make sure y'all stay tuned for these rico reports because they're about to be crazy ridiculous stats rankings they're gonna be pretty funny on top of all of that too so make sure you stay tuned for all the rico reports that i'm working on it'll be coming out over the next like two weeks basically but Let's go ahead and dive into this video. Let's get it. You tell your family you're going to be a commander. All right, so the commanders have made four roster moves. We signed defensive tackle Isaiah Mack and punter Michael Pilardi. And we released to make space for those two guys, kicker Michael Badgley, the money badger, and wide receiver Jalen Sample. Let's go ahead and dive into the kicker thing first. Then we're going to dive into the whole defensive tackle thing. And then we're also going to dive into why wide receiver Jalen Sample has already been cut before we even made it to the 53-man roster. Well, first of all, it actually was a pretty close competition at a certain point. But it looks like the defining factor between the two, between Joey Sly and Michael Badgley fighting for that competing at the very least for that kicker spot was kickoffs man that was the biggest difference between the two of course like i've already explained michael badgley was the more consistent kicker anything within 40 yards including extra points he was money especially extra points he's 100 from extra points in his career joey sly for sure isn't that I mean, last time we saw him kicking against the Cowboys week 18 last year was probably his worst kicking performance as a Burgundy and Gold member since we brought him in and signed him. So, hey, man, it, it had us nervous, and that's why we brought in the kicker competition. So, again, Michael Badgley's the more consistent guy, but he doesn't have much of a leg to him. Joey Sly is the guy with the higher ceiling. It's basically literally like Sam Howell compared to Jacoby Brissett. You're rooting for Sam Howell, but you can see why with Jacoby Brissett being more consistent, why the coaching staff would, may prefer to go with that guy. Luckily, Sam Howe won his QB competition, and Joey Sly inevitably won his kicking competition, which means that he became a more consistent kicker. Just to break it down, I've already explained this in several videos, but you can teach consistency. You can't teach talent. Michael Badgley's lack of leg, where if it's a 50-yarder or more, you pretty much might as well just go ahead and punt that. Go ahead and kick it off, whatever. Like We're not going to actually complete that field goal to convert that field goal that's just not gonna happen Michael Badgley just cannot make kicks from a certain distance Joey Slot can make a kick from any distance you need he has the higher ceiling just the lower floor he had a problem with consistency especially when it comes to extra points anything within 40 yards that's Michael Badgley's money honestly if we could just keep two kickers on roster have Michael Badgley come kick when it's short yardage wise and Joey Slot come kick when it's long yardage wise we would be perfect like literally we could just put them together into one person but most notably the fact that we're already moving on from Michael Badgley shows that Joey Sly has earned their trust already again like I said before we went into that Cowboys game week 18 I had full trust in Joey 
Boy Slide. I was like, that's my franchise kicker. We're good to go. Nothing to worry about. And then he raised questions by being extremely inconsistent in that game. Maybe that was just an off night, but either way, the commanders weren't taking any chances. They brought in kicking competition right before training camp. We got to work. We was like, Joey Sly, you got to earn that starting role. It's not just going to be handed to you like we would have presumed. Like before that week 18 game against the Cowboys, I would have never thought that we needed a kicking competition. But I'm glad that we brought Michael Badgley in to bring out the consistency in Joey Sly. Again, Joey Sly is the stronger leg. We just need him to be more consistent. And like I keep saying, it's easier to teach consistency, to teach a, a talented player to be more consistent than to teach a consistent player to become more talented. It's almost impossible. It's impossible to teach Michael Badgley to learn how to kick further. And then speaking of kicking further, Michael Badgley has a big problem with actual kickoffs, ignoring field goal kicks because they were almost about even when it came to that so far in training camp. But the biggest difference was kickoffs, man. Michael Badgley cannot kick it into the opposite end zone on kickoffs to force touchbacks. That man will kick it and all of his kicks will basically be returnable, whereas Joey Sly's kicking it to the point that he almost makes the field goal on a kickoff. Like he's almost kicking it through in between the goal post type of stuff. So, hey man, that was the defining factor. That was the thing that truly separated the two and that's the main reason why Joey Sly won the kicking competition. But at the end of the day, I'm still happy that we had it. Even though at the end of the day, the result ended up being the same as if we did have a kicking competition but you never know maybe joey sly stepped it up this offseason because we brought in kicking competition and i feel like we should do this all of the time shouts out to chris russell the guy that runs locked on commanders he brought up a great point he said joey sly did much better this august as far as like training camp and preseason and stuff like that than he even did last year last year during the preseason we were all worried about joey sly he was not kicking well training camp all of that so winning the commander's kicker job is not a surprise but was glad that they brought in some legit competition should have done it last year and they chose not to and if they had joey sly may have been cut last year like if we brought in michael badgley last year with the way that joey sly was kicking in the off season before the regular season michael badgley may have won it because that's just how inconsistent joey sly was but then we brought in kicking competition this year and now you have to think maybe that kicking competition brought out the best in joey sly he, he knew he had to be on point because if he missed any kicks we're starting to look at him like hey man you may lose your job type of thing so bringing michael badgley in i'm not sure if bringing him in just made joey sly step up his game or if michael badgley's just literally better this offseason compared to last offseason and that just happens to be a coincidence maybe a mix of both but either way i'm very happy that we brought in kicking competition that was very necessary and then Joey Sly always, it always felt like he was the favorite, just like Sam Howell as far as the quarterback competition. There are strong parallels there, up and down, if you just break everything down, get real specific with it. But at the same time, I'm just happy that he went out there and actually earned it. It didn't just simply become our starting kicker by default because there were no other available competitive guys. So I'm a big fan of the fact that we brought in Michael Badgley. Even though Joey Sly ended up winning and getting us the same result, whether we brought in Michael Badgley or not, but I'm just happy that Joey Sly, we forced him to kick it up another gear and to become more consistent, become a better kicker. Dive deep within and practice even more. If you typically do 50 kicks at the end of practice, step it up to 100 type of stuff that's what bringing in kicking competition does to people and so i think joey sly at the end of all of this is a better kicker than he would have been if we didn't bring michael badgley and that's my main point and i'm happy about that and then also speaking of kickers tressway with his back tightness that he still has going on will not punt in monday's preseason game against the ravens he would just hold just like he did against the browns so in the browns game instead of punting he just held for the kicker um he's gonna do basically the same thing against the ravens uh and then they're saying that tress ways punts in practice and he's perfectly fine and everything but they just don't want to risk anything in a preseason game with anything crazy happening him getting hit with people trying to make a name for themselves i mean the special teamers are typically the guys that are at the very back of the roster doing everything that they can to get noticed and make the team those guys are the most desperate guys on the field so imagine throwing tressway out there your starting punter your franchise punter arguably the most underrated punter in the nfl i know he's a punter but still that guy is the truth man and just imagine with a guy that important to our future success for this season and beyond uh, a guy that's like the 87th on the 
roster right now as far as depth chart goes trying to make it into that top 53 for the 50 man roster cuts they get finalized before week one of the regular season imagine one of them desperate guys coming in and doing everything that he can to potentially block Tressway's kick running into him and making his back tightness even worse and turning something small into something big that's why the commanders are avoiding putting Tressway out there right now he's good to go like like they said like they've been reporting Tressway has been doing everything in practice as if everything is normal and good to go like he's a hundred percent but preseason season games they don't even want to risk it i'm not sure if they're going to just continue doing that for the rest of our lives for the rest of his career or if some of that back tightness does have an effect on that but either way he's good to go he's good to go for week one most importantly and we're just being overly cautious right now when it comes to his injury that's all you really need to know there then when it comes to defensive tackle this is really interesting because for darian mathis is still dealing with a calf issue and last time we saw him, he had a boot on his leg. And then you have Jonathan Allen dealing with a plantar fasciitis. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And shouts out to all y'all in the comment section telling me exactly what that meant and everything. So we brought in a defensive tackle in Isaiah Mack to just be a part of the rotation. We just need bodies out there. Not necessarily like we're bringing in a guy that has a strong chance of making the 53 man roster. We literally just need defensive tackles because right now Jonathan Allen and Fedarian Mathis aren't practicing. Fedarian Mathis... I don't know what's going on with that. I have absolutely no timetable. I don't know if he's ready for week one. I don't know if they're being overly cautious with that situation. I have no idea. As far as Jonathan Allen goes, Ron Rivera is saying, just like with Tressway, just like Logan Thomas and Charles Leno, they're being overly cautious. If we had to play a game today, they're basically saying that Jonathan Allen will be ready to go. I'm not sure about that when it comes to Fidarian Mathis, which makes when it comes to these 53 man roster cuts trying to tr trim it down andre jones just stepped onto the scene and flashed he's gonna make the 53 man roster i highly doubt we cut our fifth round pick in kj henry even though andre jones has been more impressive then you still have fa obata who's really good jay smith williams both of those guys can play d tackle and defensive end whatever you need on the defensive line casey two is a solid backup john ridgeway there's no way we can cut him but right now we're running out of spots for the defensive line we i mean those all of those names i've mentioned we're not even talking about the top four guys that are automatic locks we we only have but so many spots open for defensive line right now what are we going to do with Fedarian mathis or casey till or john ridgeway i'm pretty sure Fedarian mathis is going to make the roster but is he healthy enough like you know how silly we would feel to release john ridgeway but just we literally just don't have any spots available and then Fedarian mathis is, ends up getting hurt or he's already hurt right now you never know and then john ridgeway gets picked up by another team and does for that team what he did for us last year how we snuck him away from the cowboys practice squad and then balls out steps in big time for us i highly doubt we cut john ridgeway but it's really difficult to keep pretty much two pure nose tackles i mean fedaria mathis has some defensive tackle upside to where he can kind of rush the passer a little bit um but at the end of the day both of those guys are pretty much just nose tackles zero techs and to keep two of those with all the defensive line depth and competition we have going on that's going to be difficult in itself so this fedaria mathis injury complicates everything right now I mean, I already assumed, I hope, that we don't cut John Ridgeway, but now it seems like no matter what, we can't because we're not even sure if Darian Mathis is ready to go week one right now. So everything's just complicated. And then again, Jonathan Allen's still dealing with the issue. Even though it's not serious, the fact that he's still dealing with the issue is really, really interesting. And then again, we're bringing in this Isaiah Matt guy. Are they bringing him in? not only to compete but maybe they brought him in to see like if Fedarian Mathis can't go maybe Isaiah Mack does make this roster you never know this guy had a 8.2 RAS coming out of Chattanooga when he was an undrafted free agent in 2019 so this guy has some upside he has some ceiling maybe he's just one of those guys that needs to find the right place the right system to figure it out you never know when we drafted Andre Jones in the seventh round I'm pretty sure almost nobody saw him flashing like this and looking like pretty much everything we wanted Shaka Tony to be and we were waiting on them to be for like the past couple of years. Um, you never know if Isaiah Mike has that type of ascension. I doubt it, but you never know. But more so, more importantly, that move of Asana and Isaiah Mack, if anything, just makes me worry about Fedarian Mathis. Because right now, it just sounds like him and Jonathan Allen aren't available to practice. Or Jonathan Allen, they're keeping him out, out of an abundance of caution. Whereas Fedarian Mathis sounds like he's just plain old unavailable. Like I keep saying, a lot of these guys, if we had to play a regular season game right now that mattered in the win or loss column, most of these guys would play. I can't say the same for Fedarian Mathis. I do not know. Maybe he's not even ready for week one. And then lastly, 
again wide receiver Jalen Sample got cut and that was pretty expected um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that because our wide receiver competition is already extremely competitive I feel like our defensive line and our wide receiver cuts are going to be the hardest to make I feel like both of those groups whoever we end up not keeping is going to end up going to another team and balling out or at the very least contributing very early um, somebody's going to end up getting a steal from our roster by who we release between Bryson Tremaine, Mitchell Tinsley, Kazma Allen Dax Milne, Marcus Kemp, Byron Pringle. It's just a lot of talent back there in the receiving group. And Jalen Sample just simply wasn't cutting it. I mean, you, you heard that I typically don't even bring up his name. Zion Bowens is another guy I highly doubt has done enough to even have a chance of making this 53 man roster but and then on top of all of that the guys have already mentioned on top of the four locks that we already have the four stars of the receiver group is tough competition so Jalen Samples inevitable they were probably looking around like we need to sign a defensive tackle and we need to sign a punter we're releasing kicker Michael Badgley because we already know Joey Sly won the competition so we're just looking around the roster for anybody to cut and Jalen Sample was just first in line basically but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video the kicker competition competition with Joey Sly winning it do you feel like they're just hiding this for Darian Mathis injury away from us and not giving us updates for a reason because it may be a little bit more serious than we think do you think Isaiah Mack has an honest chance to actually win a spot on this roster or is he just literally a camp body that we're bringing in to rotate for practice and um, he'll get us plenty of opportunities against the Ravens because I'm pretty sure the backups are going to come in fairly soon against the Ravens I don't think the starters are going to play very long but who knows I could be wrong but either way man let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video Tress Way's injury should we be worried about that and of course please stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button because I'd really appreciate it man I really really do it's free for y'all and it means the world to me and speaking of that shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my Pro Bowl sponsors name you see scrolling the screen right now I'm gonna catch y'all later I'm out oh,